Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. In this video, second problem I'm going to solve on sequencing. So sequencing problems are those problems where we have to find out what is the optimum sequence of completing a number of jobs and every job passes through different facilities or different machines. So Johnson and Bellman has given a technique of finding out the optimum sequence, how to find out the optimum sequence. So all the theory I have explained in the theory videos. So before watching the problems, I suggest my students, first of all, be thorough about the concept of this sequencing problems. Then only you can better understand the technique. So if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject operations management, select the videos of sequencing, be perfect, be thorough about the technique concept, then you can easily understand. So last video, first problem we have done in this video, second problem. So before starting the second problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of the points written on the board, then I'll explain. Come on, see the problem number two. Seven jobs go first over machine M1 and then over machine two. Processing times in hours are given as follows. So we are having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven jobs A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Machine one and machine two. All the time processing times are given for each job on each of the machine. Find the optimal sequence in which jobs should be processed. So what is the optimum sequence? How we should complete all the jobs? Which job should be done first and which job should be done next? That sequence we have to find out. Our objective is to minimize the time. Minimum, shortest possible time, we want to finish all the jobs. So the technique given by Johnson and Bellman is find out the smallest processing time for all the jobs, in all the jobs, smallest time you have to select. Sometimes the smallest, I mean, uh, processing time comes on M1 and sometimes it may come on M2. If the smallest processing times happens to be on first machine, assign from the left, from the first cell. And if the smallest processing time happens to be in the second machine, assign the job from the right, that is from the last cell, that technique we have to apply. Every problem, one or two new points we will come across. All the problems are not same. So watch all the problems if you want the perfect knowledge. Now here jobs are A, B, C, D, E, F, G and the processing times are also given. So in this processing times, find out the smallest. The smallest is two hours. That's why I have put the asterisk mark here. So for which job it is two hours F job. On which machine? Second machine. Second machine means we have to assign from the right. So total seven boxes we open. The smallest time is two hours for job F on machine M2. So we assign job F in the last cell as follows. The so seven boxes we have to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it is on second machine. So we assign job F in the last cell, right? So one job is finished, F job over. Now we will not consider F job. Remaining jobs we will consider. The remaining processing times are A, B, C, D, E. We don't have F, then G. In this processing times, which is the smallest processing time? You can find here six, but six, is occurring two times. There is a tie. One six is for job A on M1 and one six is for job G on M2. So if it is on M1, assign from left. If it is on M2, assign from right. So what we'll do? Uh, two jobs. Simultaneously two jobs we can assign. A job in the left. Left means first cell. 
and G job is on M2. M2 means right side. Right side already one job we have assigned F. So before F we assign G. So here I have explained the next smallest time is 6 hours for job A on M1 and also for job G on M2. So we assign job A in the first cell and job G to the right before job F as follows. Three jobs we have assigned. The remaining four jobs. The remaining processing times of four jobs are B, C, D, E. Right? The processing times are this one. What is the smallest processing time? 12 hours. But again 12 hours there is a tie. That means 12 hours for job D is on both machines M1 as well as M2. Now what should be done? Arbitrarily. Select any one of the 12. If you select the first uh, 12 on M1, then job D should be assigned to the left because it is on M1. So if you want to select M2, this 12, second 12, M2, then you have to assign job D to the right. You will get the same answer whether you, uh, I mean, arbitrarily select M1 machine or M2 machine. That is the new point in this problem. So don't get confused. So 12 hours, select anyone, either the first one 12 or second one 12. What I have done is, I have selected the first one 12. That means D job 12 hours on M1. M1 means we have to assign from the left. Already A job we have assigned. Now this is the D job. So after A I have assigned D. Right? So this D also over. No remaining jobs. Remain. How many uh, as jobs we have already assigned? A, D, G, F. Four jobs we have assigned. Still we are left with three jobs. That is B, C and E. So processing times 24, 20, 30, 20, 20, 24. Again, a new point is there. 20 is the minimum processing time and it occurs three times. First to 20 is on for E job on M1. Secondly, 20 for B job on M2. Thirdly, C 20 hours on M2. So what we have to take? Arbitrarily. First, we take this 20. First, we take this 20. That means E job should be assigned to the left because M1 is there. So already left A, D we have assigned. Now E we assign after D. We assign E after D like this. Right? Now we are left with the two jobs. These two jobs. Now we select B job 20 hours on M2. M2 means second machine. We have to assign from the right. So this job E, no sorry, job B, we assign to the right here, right? Now lastly, only one job is left, that is C job. Remaining C, remaining cell, we put the C job. So finally, we will get the optimum sequence. So in order to minimize the total elapsed time, the optimum sequence is first we should do A job. After completing A, start D, then start E, like this sequence. If this sequence is followed, then definitely the total elapsed time will be minimum. So how to find out the total elapsed time and idle time of machine M1 and M2? We have to make the table. So in this table, first column, job A, B, this sequence will take A, D, E, C, B, G, F. Then second broad column machine M1, third broad column machine M2 and last column idle time for M2 machine. There is no need to, to make the column for idle time for M1 because once M1 starts the doing the job, it will continuously do. In between there is no idle time. From zero hour it will start. It will complete all the jobs then only it will stop. So in between there is no idle time. Only in the last case we will have idle time. So idle time on M2. So machine M1 in out. At what time the job begins and at what time the job ends. So in out. Machine 2 in out. So first of all we begin the jobs from 0 hour. 
from zero or will start. Now check a machine, oh sorry, a job M1 machine in the original problem. A job on M1 machine is 6 hours. The 0 plus 6, 6 hours. It will start from 0 hour and at the end of the 6th hour, the job A is finished. So immediately after 6th hour, the new job will be started on M1 machine. So it will begin from C. Uh, it will begin from 6. Now what is the next job here? D. So find out what is the processing time for D job on M1. Here D job on M1 is 12 hours. So 6 plus 12, 18. So 18 time, 18th hour, the job will be finished. Immediately at 18th hour, next job E will be started. Now check what is the time for M1 machine on E. E job M1 machine 20. So we'll start 18 plus 20, 38. So it will end at 38. Immediately at 38, next job, C M1. Check C M1 30. So 38 plus 30, 68th hour it will be finished. Immediately at 68th hour, next job B. So B M1. How much is B M1 24? So 68 plus 24. You will get 92. At 92, again we'll start the next job G. G M1. G M1 is 18. So 92 plus 18. You will get 110. Now we start at 110. F M1. F M1 is 22. So 110 plus 22, 132. Finished. The work had been completed on machine M1. It started the work from 0 hour and it finished all the jobs at 132 hour. So during this period, there is no idle time for M1 machine. Now one by one, we have to take for M2 machine. M2 machine will start working only after completing the work on M1. The first job is A job. It finished at 6th hour on M1. So immediately at 6th hour, the work will be started on M2. So in time is 6th hour. So first 6 hours, the M2 machine was idle. Because M2 can start doing the work only after completing M1. So after 6th hour is the in time. Now how much time A job for M2? Here you can say A job M2 16. So 6 plus 16, 22nd hour. At 22nd hour, the job will be finished. Whereas, the next job was already finished at 18th hour. But 18th hour, it will not be started because first job has taken up to 22 hours. So when the next job will start, you have to take the higher of the two. Which higher? 22 or 18. 22 is higher. So it will start from 22nd hour. The next job will be started from 22nd hour. So D job. D job M2. D job M2 is 12. So here 22 plus 12, 34. Now here 34, 34 hour it was finished, the second job. But the third job here on M1 it's completed on 38. So at 34th hour the job will not be started. Higher of the two, 34 or 38. Whichever is higher, 38. So from 38th hour, this job will be started. So actually machine 2 has completed second job at 34th hour. But third job it started at 38th hour. So from 34 to 38 hours, machine M2 was idle. So 38 minus 34, 4 hours idle time. Right? So 38 it started. Now E job M2. E job M2 24. So 38 plus 24, 62. Right? Now 62 or 68, whichever is higher. 68 is higher. It completed the third job at 62 hour. But fourth job cannot be started until and unless M1 will complete the work. M1 has completed the work at 68. So 62 or 68, whichever is higher is 68. Now C job M2. C job M2 is 20. 68 plus 20, it is 88. 
Now 88 or 92. How many hours we, uh, we uh, idle time is there? 62. So 68 minus 62 is 6 hours idle time for M2. Here also it will start at 92 but already finished the work at 88. So 92 minus 88, 4 hours is the idle time. Right? Now B job M2 is 20. 60, 20. B job M2 is 20. So B job 92 plus 20, it is 112. Now 112 or 110, whichever is higher. So 112 is higher. So it will start at 112. Finished 112 and started the next job at 112. There is no idle time. Right? G job M2. G job M2 is 6 hours. So 112 plus 6 is 118. Now 118 or 132, whichever is higher. 132 is higher. Actually, this job was finished at 118 hours. But the next job cannot be started at 118 because the job is not ready on M1. N1 has finished the work at 132. So only after 132, M2 can start. So whichever is higher, 118 or 132. 132 is higher. Now idle time is there. From 118 to 132, M2 machine was idle, waiting for the next job. So 132 minus 118, 14 hours is the idle time. Now what is the processing time for F on M2? F on M2 is 2 hours. So 132 plus 2, 134, finished. So total beginning of the first job is at 0 hour and end of the last job is 134 hours. This is the total elapsed time. So minimum total elapsed time is 134 hours. Now idle time on machine M1. Actually there is no in between idle time. It started at 0 hour and continuously it goes up to 132 hours. The total elapsed time is 134. But M1 machine has finished the job at 132. So 134 minus 132, 2 hours. That is the idle time for machine M1. And machine M2, the idle time is add up 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 14. It comes to 34 hours. This is the idle time on machine M2. So these problems are very, very simple problems. The only thing is practice is needed. So don't depend only on just watching the video and listening the lecture. That will not be enough. After watching, after listening, you have to practice. You will have the worksheet. You will have the problem sheet. From the problems, Again, you try to solve it. If you are stuck anyway, if you are confused anyway, then watch the video. Find out where you are committing the mistake. Again, do it like that if you do. Starting three, four problems, if you watch with full concentration, remaining problems easily you can do. So I wish you all the best for your preparations. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.